Well hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, so for this week's video I thought I'd talk about my favourite tools and what I use in my own studio. And I think that you'll find it quite useful, especially if you're a beginner to sewing or you don't know where to start when you want to buy tools or you've walked into a haberdashery and just get overwhelmed by the selection. So I thought I'd just talk through all my favourite things that I've used over the years and what I use them for. Um, and hopefully this will be really useful information for you. I'm sorry I haven't got a DIY for you this week, but I will make sure I get one for you next week. Um, I've just been really, really busy, so I haven't really had time to prepare anything. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is scissors. Now, I'm going to start off by showing you these. These are my go-to fabric cutting scissors. They are Fiskars, but not the really, really large ones. Um, now, there are loads of different sizes, but for me, I have quite small hands. So, the really, really large dressmaking scissors, they're not very comfortable to hold for me, and I find them quite hard to cut around shapes. Um, and I've literally bought maybe about, I actually own three pairs of these. Um, they're not the cheapest scissors, but I would recommend Fiskars. They're the only scissors that I really buy. Um, they're just really, really good quality. Um, I know it's, it seems strange that to have different types of scissors, but these ones are the best for me. I really, really love them. Um, and Fiskars do their own scissor sharpener. So when yours get a bit blunt or you've been cutting thicker fabrics, um, you can just put them in there and then give them a few back and forths and then they're really, really sharp again. So you shouldn't have to replace them too often. I just have quite a few because when I'm doing different projects or I'm moving around, I have them in different places so that they're nearby. And I also take a pair with me to my sewing lessons for my students um, So because they're just really easy to use. So definitely get yourself a pair of large or medium size um, I think they're called dressmaking shears, I'm not sure, but some really good quality fabric scissors for the majority of your cutting. Now, the next thing is Fiskars again. Um, you'll see a theme here with my sharp objects. But these are the tiny little snips. Now, these save my life. Now, if you don't happen to know, the majority of what I do is personalised handmade gifts. So I do a lot of soft furnishings, small items, um, and I'm always cutting out like wording and shapes and motifs. A lot of them can be quite small. Um, and these are literally my favorite tool. I talk about them to anyone who asks me. They, they're just the love of my life. I just love them. And again, I have loads and loads of pairs of these. I think I have four pairs of these now. Um, they're just really, really useful. Also, to have a pair next to your sewing machine because I don't know about you, but the cutters on the side of the sewing machines, I don't like them because they always fray the thread, threads and things. So I always have this a pair of these right next to my sewing machine so I can just snip things off, trim off any loose ends, neaten up seams and stuff like that. So um, I definitely recommend you get a pair of these mini Fiskars snips as well. Okay, and the third thing in my sharp Fiskars objects <laughs> is a rotary cutter. Now, my mum bought me this as a gift last year, and I said to her, I don't need a rotary cutter, you know, I like cutting things out with scissors, you know, what do you use it for, blah, 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 blah. And mum was like, honestly, there will come a time when you will love this. Now, that has come this year. <laughs> I have a large cutting mat. You will need a large cutting mat if you get one of these. Um, and I would show you mine, but mine takes up half my cutting table. So you will need a cutting mat. Now the cutting mats are quite expensive, but you will only ever have to buy one once. Um, and they're really useful. Now, this is what I use to do all my pattern cutting for clothing. If, like me, you have been sewing gifts and soft furnishings for a long time, you will not know why you need one of these. But when you come to make something and you're having to cut out patterns and every time you lift up the fabric with your scissors it moves, it can be so annoying. Whereas this, you just stick the blade up like that and you just glide it around your pattern and it's done. It's so good. 
And I take back everything I said to my mother because I love this tool. Um, you can obviously get the replacement blades for this, you just unscrew it at the back and, and replace them. But mum did buy me a spare one and I've never changed this. Um, mind you, I've only been dressmaking for about a year now, so and I haven't made that much. So you might need to replace it a bit more. Um, but definitely for if you are working with thin fabrics like silk, satins, crepes, things like that, this is your lifesaver, I promise you. Invest in one and a cutting mat, you will love it. Next in your sewing box, you will need machine needles. Now I know that sounds quite obvious. A lot of people, especially my students, don't realize that you have to change your needle quite often. Now, they say, generally, you should change your machine needle every time you finish a project. Now, I don't really suggest that because if you're doing something small and then you replace it and then you do something else small and then you replace it, you're gonna run, you're gonna run out of needles very, very quickly. But it's always useful to have them nearby and in loads of different types. Now, yes, you have your universal ones, you also need sharps ones for doing thinner fabrics and I also use um, embroidery needles as well in assorted sizes because I do a lot of machine embroidery and things like that so I like to use different sizes than those as well. It's useful to have a different variety of needles and to do your research on them so if you're unsure there's so many articles online that will show you what needles you'll need for which fabrics and things like that and it's Honestly, you will find there's a huge difference in the quality of your sewing if you just change your needle. Um, I also didn't really believe it when I first started sewing. I just used to use universal needles all the time. And then the more I wanted my work to look more professional, and the more practice I had with my sewing, I realized, gosh, like if I just change one thing, my sewing instantly becomes neater, the finish is better, there's no problems with tension, thread bunching, honestly your needle will make a huge difference and also if you're having problems with your machine or your you know it just keeps bunching up and you think like what's wrong with this like it, it should be you know sewing perfectly fine just change your needle because you'd be surprised that a blunt needle can mess up your machine so much honestly so a variety of machine needles are very very useful and the next thing is pins now this might seem obvious I have so many pins. I mostly use, I don't know why I have so many of these. I think they're like quilting pins. They're like really, really long ones. Um, and I have also like the sharp small ones as well. I have loads of different sizes. Um, and I keep them all in jars like this with some fabric tops. I actually made these. I have three pin cushions in my studio. Um, I have one on my cutting table, one next to my machine and one next to my overlocker. Now, this might seem excessive, but I'm one of those people where I don't like having to get up and like get something just to sit back down again. I like to have everything around me that I need in reach. And this just means that I can sew quicker, I can get on with work quicker, my deadlines can just instantly be done because everything's efficient. So keep some in like different places. If you've obviously got only one table that you work from, then just keep them on that table. Um, but with my studio, I move around from table to table, so it's useful to have some nearby. Um, but definitely some pins are a must have. And I do recommend having the ones with um, these like bobbles on the end rather than like this type here. I don't know if you can see that with nothing on the end. Um, because I find at least you can see these. So when you're trying things on, you won't stab yourself or stab anyone else with them or lose them because if they drop on the floor, these tiny ones get lost, whereas these ones stick out a bit more so you can easily find them. Okay, and the next thing is tape measures. Now, I got this one. I think this is another thing that my mum got for me. Um, and because I had loads and loads of tape measures, but they were only like two meters long, whereas this one is three meters. Um, it's super, super useful. I definitely recommend getting a really, really long tape measure. Um, but when you drop this, that's three meters of tape measure that just fall around on the floor. So last year for, I think my birthday, my aunt bought me this, which is a three meter retractable tape measure. 
Now, I didn't even know that they made retractable tape measures this long because every time I bought a retractable tape measure, they've either been um, one and a half meters or two meters, and I have loads of those. But this is three meters, and it's so useful because I don't lose the end because with this, it would unravel and then I'd go to pick up the end and then it would be the wrong end and then you've got to like wrap it up and fling it around and I think this makes you look cooler if it's like <laughs> draped around your neck to make you look like a proper dressmaker if that's what you want so get that one if you like having it around your neck get this one if you don't like winding up again afterwards I didn't like this being in a pile everywhere and also I was really afraid that if I left it lying around I'd cut through it because I've done that before. So this retractable tape measure is I definitely recommend getting one of these they're very very useful. The only other thing I'd like to mention is lighting. Now we're doing a house renovation at the moment um, and my studio isn't going to actually stay in this room um, and one of the reasons why is because the lighting in here isn't that great. I have one quite large window which is there behind the camera and it's wonderful when the sun comes through that um, but generally on a day to day basis it's quite dark in here so I always have to have that main light on. Now I do get headaches quite often because I am concentrating on close things, I probably should have my eyes tested I know but I rely solely on good lighting to stop me from like getting tired eyes and getting like annoyed with stuff. So I have a angle poise lamp over my sewing machine with a daylight bulb in it. So I can put that really near to my sewing machine so I can concentrate, it's a really bright light um, that doesn't really hurt your eyes. Um, whereas this one above me is like a yellowish energy saving bulb. So it, it's less effective, it's very, very yellow. You can probably tell from the bad lighting in here today. Um, but that's not very good, especially in the evenings, it's not good to work with that on. Whereas this angle poison lamp, I've got a daylight bulb in there, so it's a nice bright light that will help. So if you can get a good lamp onto your sewing table and have a daylight bulb um, instead of just your normal yellowish light, then I promise you it will make a huge, huge difference, especially if you like to sew in the evenings because um, I know I do and especially in the winter when it gets dark so early it's really really useful to have that there so um, yes definitely invest in those. Well that's it for this week's video I really hope you enjoyed hearing about what I use in my studio I hope you found it really useful as well especially if you are a beginner to sewing and you didn't have a clue what you needed for your studio or your sewing room and I really hope this sort of helped you decide what you need obviously I have got quite a lot of stuff but I have been sewing since I was really, really young and I have been doing this full time now for six years. So obviously over the years I have bought a lot of stuff, but if you just get the basics down and then slowly build up your collection after that, I promise you that's all you really need to get started, um, as well as your sewing machine obviously and some fabrics. Um, but I hope that this helps you in some way and comment below if you want to recommend um, any tools or fancy gadgets that you found really useful because I love hearing about them. I am sort of like stuck in my ways, I don't really buy any new things unless I see it and I think it's really really useful so do let me know what you use and if there's any particular brands that you love um, and I will see you next week for another video. Happy handmade!